My name is Alok Dasgupta and I play sitar. This is Indian raga called Ahir Bhairab, which is a morning raga. Indian ragas, they divided three hours a day. So like six to nine, nine to 12, like that. So this is a morning, beautiful morning raga. And um, this one, the piece I played called Alap. Alap means literally, if you translate in English, is a introduction. Yes, um, this uh, instrument, not the particular instrument, but this is at least, we know, 750 years old, the sitar. Uh, India was, um, India is a very strange country, you know. If, if you go there, uh, they will accept you, it doesn't matter where you are coming. And for, we have a history for the last four, five thousand years, that everybody conquered India, and then they become Indian for that. The first Aryan came on maybe five, seven thousand years ago and they started to write the Vedas and uh, with all Indians and the Dravidian culture. So it's very much accepted over there. So this particular instrument at that time the Persian they came to India and conquered for many hundred years. And 750 years ago the Persian were uh, you know ruling India. So their language, the Persian language is the first language there. And Setar, Se means in Persian language, is three. And it started, but original concept is Indian. And I'll explain you why it is Indian. It's called Tri Tantri Veena, which is a Sanskrit word. And the Persian, they changed it to Setar, to Sitar, you know, we call it in the West, Sitar. But it's actually Setar. Se means Shah, three string. But later we put many strings, like Ravi Shankar, he has seven strings. In my sitar special, little different, I have six strings, main string. And this is Indian because of this. This is called sympathetic resonance string. And hope uh, you read Shakespeare. If you read Shakespeare, you will see there is a character always in Shakespeare's comedy. It's called the court gesture. And his work is to be, whenever the king will say, um, sun comes from the west and it goes to the east, though it's wrong. And the court gesture will say, yes, master. So this is the uh, purpose for this string, is sympathetic resonance string. When you play the top, we tune according to the raga or composition, and it vibrates from the bottom. So like... Like that, and then, and when I do the bending, this is only in Indian music we have the sympathetic resonance string. And purpose for our music and why it is there, we don't believe on staccato, like like pump, pump, like this. We want legato, the one sound make another sound. That sound makes another sound, and it comes the full sound, and then the whole universe is full of sound, and we try to listen to that sound, and that's why it's called. There are two kinds of sound: plucked, plucked sound and unplucked sound. The plucked sound, when we do, it goes all around in the universe, and then if we practice one, you know, every day, then one of these days we can listen that unplucked sound, the sound of God. We call Nada Brahma, the, the eternal sound. You know, it doesn't matter how much pollution over here. So pretty says the sound in the top in the universe is pure. And that's the aim for this instrument. However, this instrument is Indian and it's the Persian name. Except one instrument in in the in uh, if you go to Paris, they have there it's called Viola the Mood, love making viola, which has this string. But I don't know how it gone there. This, but this is all Indian instrument they have, and any plucked instrument has this sympathetic resonance string. And so I have the main string, and then I have a it's called chikari in the main string, 
and then we have here the 12 um, sympathetic resonance strings. Um, plucked and unplugged, um, you know, the, we hear the sound, right? And there are sound is, when you hear the sound, it's um, good sound and bad sound. For music only, we take the good sound. And from that sound, we, we can, Indian music, for Indian musician, we can get a, a sound which is musical, but we cannot produce, but we can get the dis difference between that. And that's why for Indian music we have 22 microtones. That means if you have a piano, you have in the Western music you have C to C sharp. There is no notes between that. For Indian music, we have that note. That's why we have 22 microtones. And purpose for Indian musician to listen that microtone and to produce that. That's why it is different than the Western music and plucked sound always is the music. Unplucked sound is not the music. Unplucked sound is communication to God. And for all religion, everything, if you go to the church or in the time of Bach or even Beethoven, some of that, it's a spiritual sound that when they do in the church, they used to do that. And so the sound is here, that's called plucked sound cause for that. There is a cause for the plucked sound. Unplucked sound there is no cause. It's there. There is no cause for the Brahma, the eternal God is there. It doesn't matter the way you pray, it's pray. If you pray it from your inside, there is no sound there. But you are communicating through that. And that's called the unplucked sound. Is it clear? It's very complex, but if you practice every day the music, one of these days, you don't have to play the music, you can still hear the, the ultimate sound of the world. To get something, you need uh, some tools, right? Like, um, say about, uh, I live in Los Angeles and I come over here in Abu Rayo, how I came to my car. So, the music is the way to communicate with the unplugged sound. So if you practice every day with that, then one of these days your ear and everything will try to get you the more unplugged sound. The, um, you know, the 22 microtone, what we call in Indian music, it's, that's plucked also. But there's a final line between an unplugged and a, and a plucked, you know, that one. Because obviously this is a plucked sound. Okay, but is this a plucked uh, plug sound or unplugged? So one I made here sound, but it's going here and there. And which one sound vibrates other sound, and the other sound makes vibrates, and then the whole layer of sound in this ether is full of sound. And that sound is the main thing for us to listen and to educate and to tell students, hey, this is, this is the unplugged sound. Try to listen that thing. A dog can listen better than us. We, we cannot, the dog knows, his master is coming, how? Not only smell, but the vibration. And they can distinguish between that. One of my friend, a Western musician, he said, this is a wrong note. This is right. He said, I said, why? He said that there is no note like that. I said because there is a note there and you think it's out of tune, but we don't think, listen, if I can use. It doesn't sound like out of tune. If you, have, if you know how to use that microtone for your purpose, and that microtone, there are subtle frictions of that microtone keeps another tone and that's the unplugged sound, you know, that's the way to go to the unplugged sound. The first thing um, I'll tell that uh, the music in the West, it's like a, coming from 
about 600, 700 years old. And sometimes you know that uh, people get, um, if there's a line and they cannot go in front of them. And you can listen, I'm not criticizing, this is my first thing, but there is a French word called music concrete, which is like the nature sound and everything, even the, the ambulance going to take that one and put it in the music like that. In doing that thing in the waste, the original chord structure and everything, it's now very much, I'll not say mechanical, but it's like a very intellectual. Music is intellectual, yes, but with a certain limit. How many percentage of people can acquire that taste? Rather than if you give somebody a nice uh, custard or a sweet or like that, they say, wow, this is nice in that one. And then if you give a harsh, 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 more harsh on that one, 12 tone is a great intellectuality, but how many kids, put it that, listen to the young kids and tell that how many kids will like that 12 tone or a cluster like that. And how many people will like Bach or Beethoven, Mozart like that, like that. Even you listen to the, um, uh, to Stravinsky, when I first hear I was shocked, but then I come to, you know, I like really Stravinsky, but the mic, thing is that my uh, answer is that because Indian music gives you a different tonal quality and a way for the spiritual path number two and the three is that a concept of improvisation not only really improvisation like jazz but we call it guided improvisation how you learn from your teacher or your master and you learn only 40%, you put your own concept at 60%. It's like a full library and you put it there and then you improvise from that one. And then a total music comes from a 10% improvisation to the 100% music. So these things are very, um, very interesting. And it's when it came, people started to learn that. Nowadays, sitar is part of the Western music because of Ravi Shankar, he put it the, um, you know, he came through the Beatles and then he did a great work with Philip Glass and um, Andre Previn and all great compositions um, in the sitar oriented. But that's our classical music, you know, Western classical music. Still, it's a very different kind of texture. I'll not say soothing, but people will say which one is soothing or like that. So that's why it's so fascinating that, uh, you know, first of all, it's a different kind of music. Second, also, you are venturing with not only 12 tone, but you are doing with the 22 microtone. And then third, also, you are learning the improvisation by yourself, which is, in, in the Western music, is very um, hard or a different concept on that one. But I think that it's getting so popular.